Oh, come on, we can do better than that. We back in the house of the Lord, amen? Come on and bless him. Hasn't God been kind? Hasn't he been awfully good to us? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold back on my worship. I wouldn't hold back on my praise. Because he woke me up this morning. Gave me the activity of all of my limbs. Still was able to go down to the breakfast table. Sat down and was able to feed my own self. Now you can't get no better than that when you can feed your own self. And so I'm just so thankful to the Lord this morning. I'm grateful for what he has done this whole week. How many of you have had a rough week? But nevertheless, he brought us back to the house of worship. What a mighty God we serve. He is a good, good father. Oh, I don't, I don't. I, he is a good, good father. He is a good, good father. Hallelujah. And don't you know they say hallelujah is your highest praise? If that's my highest praise. And that's all God is kind of like requiring of us. Man, we should be shouting the house down with hallelujah.
He has now, God, that you will bless the man that shall stand in John's shoes today and declare your word, oh, my God. And we pray today that, God, somebody will be saved. Somebody will come run and say, what must I do to be saved? And how can I inherit the kingdom of God? We pray right now in the name of Jesus that every ear will be open this morning. Not only will our ear be open this morning, but we will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this house. And then, God, we'll be careful, oh God, that when we leave this place, hallelujah, even out in virtual land, we come to worship you today, God. We say thank you. We say have your way right now in Jesus' mighty name. We glorify you and we enlighten you. We magnify our praise in this house this morning and it is in Jesus name we pray hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus come on put your hands together right there come on y'all came to have church with us today Come on, I dare you to get your dance on right now. Hey, everybody clap your hands. Let's spin that around one more time. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, I dare you to clap them like you've been born again. Come on, we, we got to sing this song here. Say, everybody say, bless. Everybody say bless, 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 I'm blessed, so blessed, bless, bless, come on, help us sing it, we're blessed, come on, I know y'all know that song now, when we come and when we go. Like this your favorite song. Hey, everybody clap your hands. Oh my, oh my. Come on, let's sing it right here. Hey, now everybody say bless, 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 bless. Everybody say bless.
shot that shit. Say it makes me wanna shot. Makes me wanna shot. Yeah. I dare somebody open up your mouth in this place right now. Come on, you ought to shout about it right now. Yeah. Open up your mouth in this place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you ought to shout about it right now. Open up your mouth in this place. Yeah. Come on, if he's been good to you, you ought to testify about it. Yeah. Open up your mouth in this place. Is that anybody's testimony? Is that anybody's testimony? Lord, you brought me up. Oh, no, no. Come on, with the sound of worship, I dare you to just lift your hands right now. Father, we reverence your name. We praise your name, Jesus. Because you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. But you saved an old wretch like me. You saved an old wretch like me. You saved an old wretch like me. It was your grace and mercy that's brought me this far. It was your grace and mercy that kept me this far. Your grace and mercy brought me this far. Your grace and mercy said it brought me this far. Your grace and mercy. Don't mean it's fun. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I don't feel no waste time. Come too far from where I start yes, from. Yes, oh. yes, Nobody told me yes, that the road would be. Yeah. Yes, and I don't believe. Yes, I don't believe. Sang that right there. Come on, let's go there to the top. I don't 
what worship is all about when you know without a shadow of a doubt that he ain't huh, that he ain't gonna leave me sometimes I'm up sometimes I'm down but but I know he ain't huh, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna leave me Woo. even when I stray when I when I falter Trust of God. Ah. Will y'all give that awesome praise team and the musician staff, amen, a great big hand clap of praise. Ah. If you ain't tired already, you ain't worshiped enough. Sometimes you got to loose that chair, amen. You got to loose that pew, amen. It's holding you too tight sometimes, and you ain't over 80, you ought, to, you ought to let God have his way. <laughs> Glory to God. If you, ain't got a, if you ain't got a chair that you brought in with you, you ought to loose the one you're sitting in sometime. Uh, if you ain't got a walker that help you get in the door, you ought to loose that chair every, every now and then. 
Glory to God. Because that was some shouting stuff right there. <laughs> that was some shouting stuff right there. Woo! Just knowing that God, he ain't gonna. Mm. I, and, and I know that that may not be good English for somebody, but when you realize what he ain't gonna do, woo! Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then they kill me with the first song. <laughs> Come too far for him to for him to leave me. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what what I've been through. But I come too too far. Hey, for him to leave me. When others forsake you. When others let you down when your best friend turn their back on you when loved ones turn around and, and walk away Woo! Hey, thank you Lord ah <laughs> yes God yes God yes God yes God yes God yes God when I think I think when I think, I think, God, I'm grateful that you didn't leave me. God, I'm, I'm thankful that you, that you didn't throw me away. God, I'm grateful that you didn't turn your back on me. Hey, hey, hey. Woo. Yes, God. Yes, God. All right, well, y'all give God a great big hand clap of praise one more time, amen, for that person who ain't felt it yet, amen. Will you bless the Lord for that, for that one, amen? Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. One, one day we're going to do musical chairs because I want your chair to be hot like her chair. I, I want your chair to be hot like his chair. Woo, so we might have to do musical chairs because you might be in a cold spot. But I want the anointing to be right where, right where you are, amen. It, it might not be the chair. It just might be you. But when God, ho, ho, when God, ho, ho, God, ow! Don't, 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 don't. My, 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 don't let that chair hold you. Don't let that chair hold you. Don't let that chair hold you. Woo, glory to God. When, 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 when God starts moving. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. That's what you want. That's what you want. Glory to God. Woo! Ha ha. Oh, y'all don't let her praise him by herself. Y'all want to go ahead and feel me. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo! That, that, that's what God wants. That's, that's what God wants. You all not watch the party. You ought to be the party. You all not watch the party. You ought to be the party. Yes, God. If you just try it, if, if you just try it, 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 woo! right there did you didn't get yours 
Did, did you miss? Did you miss what God was trying to trying to do in you? Were you watching the party and you weren't in the party? Were you watching the show and you didn't? Ah, well, go ahead and bless the Lord this morning. Will you? Will you go ahead and bless the Lord this morning? Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ooh, that's what. That's what the Lord wants. When you can release yourself and just enjoy the Lord. Ah, don't that feel so much? Ain't that releasing? Ain't that deliverance all in itself? Ah, somebody needed that, amen. Somebody, somebody needed that, amen. Said, so, Pastor, they going crazy. Were well, they going crazy for the Lord? Pastor, they out of control. They out of control for the Lord. And I'm just excited when you can get out of control for him. Give God one more great big hand clap of praise all over the building on this morning. Amen. God, we bless you. God, we thank you. God, we love on you on this morning. <sighs> Such a wonderful feeling when you can feel his presence. Such a wonderful place when you can be in the presence of the Lord. So, God, we thank you. So, God, we bless you. So, God, we love on you on this morning just for, for doing what only you can do. For showing up and for, for showing out. For blessing your people in a, in a special way. For moving in this facility like, like you want to move. Ah, thank you, Lord. There's nobody like you, God. Nobody like you, Master. Nobody can do me the way you, you do me. Nobody can touch me like, like, like you touch me. Nobody can love me like you do. So for that, I give your name glory. I give your name honor. And I give your name praise. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being like, like no other God. Thank you for showing me whoop, just who you are. Thank you for dancing with me. Thank you for singing with me. Thank you for holding me in your arms and loving on me. So I bless you. So I praise you. And I, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 It is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Woo! The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Ah, yes, God. Yes, God. Hey, hey, hey. There's deliverance in the, in the house. There's healing. In God's house, whatever you ask, whatever you want, is yours for the ask. Thank you, Father. Ah, my, 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 my. God, you are my Lord. You are my life. And you are my strength. And I'm glad to be called your child. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Savior. Woo. You are the great I am. Hey. You are the Prince of... Prince of Peace. 
You are way out of no way. You are my wonderful working king. You are everything to me. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. been the other way around. Does, does love you, Lord. My soul, hey, not just my mouth, not, not just my mind, not just what I think and what I say, but my soul does love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, Lord, I love you. 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 Woo! Hey. Mm. Jesus. Lord, you are. Mm. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Mm. Mm. Can you, can you bless the Lord one more time in this building? Can you, can you bless Him one more time all over this place? Can you bless Him one more time, Amen? And just tell Him, yes, God. Ha! Huh? Just tell Him, yes, God. Woo. God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, we love you on this morning. I want to give honor to God. He's my life. He's my health. He's my strength this morning too. To my lovely wife of some 38 beautiful years, God, we bless you. To our wonderful ministerial staff, the word carriers, God, we bless you. To our wonderful board of deacons, deaconess, our leadership tier, and all of you, God's children, we, we bless you on this morning. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Good morning, Pleasant Hill. Good morning, virtual world. Good morning, our family. Thank you for letting God have his way. Thank you for letting God just bless us like only God knows how to bless us. 
thank you so much. Mm. I know you have enjoyed your weekend thus far, amen, and I know you have enjoyed this morning thus far, amen, but bear with us just a few moments, amen, and let me give you a word from the Lord on this morning to see if it will um, finish out what God wanted to do in you on today, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. If you would grab your Bibles in your hand real quickly, amen, grab your electronic devices, Yes, God. Yes, God. Because he's worthy. Mm. Yes, God. Yes, God. While you're telling him thank you, go to 1 Samuel. Ah. Go to 1 Samuel, the, the 16th chapter. Ah. Because you are worthy. In 1 Samuel, the 16th, the 16th chapter. Run your finger all the way down to that 10th verse. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 And for those who can, let us stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Even if you're in your homes, amen, let us Give God reverence and respect for his word. Jesus respected the word so much so that he stood up for the read of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, starting at the 10th verse, you will find these words written. And Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Sin and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the oil, the horn of oil, and anointed him. In the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Want to talk to you just for a little while this morning from the subject. I'm anointed for this. Glory to God. Go ahead and look at your neighbor as you take your seat. And just even through your mask, go ahead and tell your neighbor, I'm anointed for this. Glory to God. I, I want to help somebody this morning because we have to understand that even when I drove up upon the lot, I seen all of those beautiful, pretty cars shining and look like it just got a good wash job on yesterday. But, but I want to ask the question, the ones that are shining on the outside, been through a, a detail or DJs or um, one of those wax jobs, what's going on on the, on the inside? I, I want to come to you because I'm saying just because it's shining and pretty on the outside, when the last time you had an oil change? It might be looking good, but I, but I, but I want to help you because everything that's shining, everything that glitter ain't gold. If, if we just going to wash up on the outside, God want us to do something on the, on the inside. Now, most mechanics will tell you, you can drive a dirty car, but if you change the oil and get a tune-up, it'll run just fine. So I don't mind your car being shiny. I just want to make sure you've got an oil change. After every 3,000 miles, 5,000 miles, depending on whether you're using regular oil or synthetic oil, oh, my God, I just want to make sure you're using fresh oil. 
Okay, somebody, somebody missed that. I, I, I want to talk to somebody because I don't want you to wait until your car is smoking or until it's knocking for you to realize you need an oil change. And when I was teaching my children about cars, you got to open up the hood every now and then. And grab that little thing that looked like it's got a hook on it. And pull it out and check it. And if it looked like it's shiny and clean, there's a problem. I'm going somewhere. It should have some oil on it. It should have some brown or black stuff on it to show that there's some oil in the engine. And if your oil is not in the engine, after a while, your engine going to crash. I'm going somewhere this morning because you need an oil change. In the Bible, oil represents the anointing. When I pour this oil on folk head, we purchase it from Walmart. It's virgin oil. It's just a simple um, anointment, but watch this. When it's prayed over, when it's set aside, when it's set apart, you can take this bottle and it'll do some work. But if you go and get a bottle from the store and think it, it ain't going to, until you pray over it, until you set, oh my God, until you set it aside to do what God called it to do, it's just oil. But when it's been set aside for God, then it becomes the anointing. We use oil and anointing symbolically or should I say synonymously in the word of God. When your Bible talks about oil, it's talking about the anointing. When David was poured the oil on his head, it was the anointing he was, he was receiving. He wasn't just getting greasy. I'm going somewhere. I, I thank God for the term greasy because God will anoint us so we can get greasy. And when we are greasy, we can slip out of stuff. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all, somebody missed that. When, when you're greasy, guess what? The devil can't hold on to you because he can't get a grip. But when you don't have no oil on you. The devil will cling to you. He'll stick to you. He'll get a hold on you, and you can't get away because you ain't oily. You ain't, you ain't greasy. Are there any greasy folk in the house? Are there any, any oily folk in the house? Is there any anointed folk in the house? What I love about this lesson is that Samuel is not going to be king. Never will Samuel be king. But he is anointed. To make king. So, so, somebody, somebody go miss this. There are some folk who have to be in the spotlight. There are some folk who have to be in the limelight. But then there are some folk who do their job without a pat on the back. Who do their job behind the scene. Who work it in the background. Who will never be king. But they are anointed to do work. Most folk want to be right here. Most folk want to be in the limelight. Most folk want to be in the spotlight. But there are king makers in the background whose job is just as important as the king. I'm going to hurt somebody this morning, but I'm going to hurt you by helping you. When we get to a point that we don't understand why oil is relevant, we're at a point that you think is just for the car, but oil is for you. If you plan on going somewhere, if you plan on doing something, you need all to do what God called you to do. Amen. If you think your anointing is just for these four walls, then you missed the whole part of what I'm talking about. Your anointing is more than just for church. I told you the other week, I need my anointing on Monday morning when I go to work. I, I need my anointing on Tuesday when I come to Taco Tuesday. I need my anointing on crazy Wednesdays as well. I don't know how many of you work in the school system, but you need your anointing in the classroom. I don't know how many of you in the government, but you need your anointing in the courtroom. Even if you're sick and going to the doctor, you need your anointing even in the doctor office. You anointing when you walk in this door, but when you walk out, you ain't got no power. You ain't got no zeal. You ain't got no God. But you need your anointing wherever you go. We were talking about the uh, after school program and talking about sometimes it's not the children, but it's the parents. And they were talking about how can we give some more uh, parenting skills, having some classes to teach parents how to be parents. Now, it kind of messed me up because my mom raised 10 kids and she ain't never had a parenting class. Don't, don't, don't let me hurt nobody because I know young folk may not understand this. M my mom raised 10 kids and all she had was some anointing. 
Watch this. She knew how to lift her hands and she knew how to lay her hands. Oh, my God. She knew how to lift her hands and she knew how to lay her hands. And, and it was more than just biblical. The Bible said you spared a rod, you spoiled a child. So even though her hands will go up, her hands will come down. And we were all raised right. But the problem with it was all of us didn't stay right. When we got old enough, big enough, bold enough to do what we thought we were bad enough to do, some of us went our own way. But I thank God she put it in us when we were young enough that it would cause us to come back to what we knew we were raised. And now if you ain't raising them right, they can go and do anything they want. But if it's in them, I guarantee you at some point, it's going to show up. Uh, I, I want to help you because this all that I'm talking about, amen, this, it will help you to be powerful. It will help to protect you. And it will help you to be uh, precise. I, I'll get to that in a minute. This, this anointing that I'm talking about, watch it in biblical definition because it don't define anointing. But when we look at it in the Bible, it's this. It's the appointing. It's the authorizing. And it's the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, we talked about that when we taught on the Holy Spirit. It's the appointing, it's the authorizing, and the empowering presence. If you was here this morning, you already understand that. If, if you didn't feel that this morning, if you, if you wasn't authorized this morning to just let God have his way, if you wasn't appointed to just let go and let God, then you missed it. The demonstration was already available, but somebody flunked the class. Somebody watched it and didn't worship it. Okay, okay. That's, that, 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 that. We get so caught up in ourselves and so caught up in trying to figure out what's going on, we forget to release ourselves into what God is trying to do. You looking at what somebody else getting and forget to get your own. It's okay to be watchful and to be mindful, but guess what? Baby, I'm going to tear that chair up. That's probably the most woe out little spot in the whole church. Because every Sunday, regardless of who's singing, regardless of who's praising, I'm going to get mine. I didn't get up this morning not to get them worship. I didn't get up this morning not to give God some praise. But I bless the Lord that I know you are doing the same. Washing your car. Waxing your car. Armor all in your car but not putting in any oil. Looking good on the outside, but the inside is about a mile from crashing. You might be right, but do you have oil? You might be cute, but, but do you have oil? Oh, I, I, I'm going somewhere. You might be smart, but, but do you have oil? You might even be shining, but do you have oil? Do you have the anointing? Let me, let me just help you this morning because anointing is more than your natural ability. Folk can play. Folk can sing. Folk can preach. Folk can teach. But the anointing goes beyond what your natural ability say you can do. Well, well Pastor, you trying to hurt? I went to school for this. Well, baby, that, you don't get anointing in school. You get the anointing on your knees. You get the you get the anointing. You get the anointing in the word. You get the anointing when you spend some time with God. Your education is good, but your education don't anoint you. Your degrees are good, but your degrees don't anoint you. Until you spend some time on your knees, until you spend some time with the master, that's where the anointing comes from. Ah. So some of these seasons and circumstances we're going through, let me help the young folk. Your drip not going to get you through it. Most of them, they be t stuff I don't even understand. Talking about. Pastor, they got sauce. They got drip. But I, my question is, do you have anointing? Your sauce and your drip might get you through something, but you're going to need the anointing to get you through this. Uh, I, I'm trying to help you. Because people who are anointed, watch, watch God, watch God. People who are anointed, when they work, God works. 
when they when they, when they sing, God sings. When they play, God people who are anointed, watch it. When they speak, God speak. God said, "I got your back. I got your amen." Even when nobody else says amen, because you're teaching and talking the word of God, God said, "I got you." Hallelujah. Some, somebody missed that. I want to help us this morning because if you don't understand the anointing, you're going to miss out on all the power, all the privileges that are available to you because you said, man, I can do this on my own. We are supposed to be God-reliant, and we claim to be, but most folk are self-reliant because you've learned how to do it. You choose to do it your own way. It's a God idea, but you're doing it the way you want to do it. When it's a God work, don't use your talents. If it's a God work, it will be easier and more effective if you use God's talents. Can I just talk about me for a second? I've never been to school for auto mechanics, never been to school for handiwork, but I can fix just about anything. Nobody taught me. I used to hang around my dad doing stuff, but nobody taught me all of these skills. Somehow God just dropped it on me. See, somebody, somebody missed it. I didn't sit in a classroom to learn how to do plumbing. I didn't sit in a classroom to learn how to do electrical work. But guess what? God dropped it on me, and every time I get ready to do it, I do it well. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Don't call me to fix nothing. The reason I say that is because I'm going to bring the anointing. Somebody missed that. Well, Pastor, what are you talking about? Raising our children, you don't just need uh, parenting classes, uh, parenting skills. You need the anointing to raise these kids. I'll just tell you about the own, my own three. As good as I may think they are, kids will drive you up the wall. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe just my kids. And if I didn't have the anointing and raising those kids, I'd have killed all. Uh, whew, okay, my, my, my bad. I'd have hurt all three of them at some point in life. As much as I love them, oh, whoo. I, I know you, just, you see the good part about them, but I see them every day. And there are some times when I would just strangle. Okay, okay, let me, let me talk this way. Because I feel my wife getting a little nervous. But she know because I done pulled her off of her. <laughs> huh. uh, the only reason I'm telling you this is because the anointing is what breaks the yoke. You trying to be stronger. You trying to be better. But you got to be anointed. Mm, this appointing, this authorizing, this empowering presence of the Holy Ghost. That's what will cause you to get what God has you to have. Watch this lesson. Watch the lesson. Watch this. Samuel, who I told you will not be king, but he's a kingmaker. Samuel, who I told you, is not looking for pride or prestige or the lamb or the uh, limelight, does what God called him to do. He sends him to Jesse's house to make a king. The thing that bothers me about this whole lesson is it took somebody outside of the house to see what was in the house. Jesse is in the house every day and he don't even know he got a king in the house. Are there any kings in this house? It took Samuel who was outside of the house to come and find a king who was already in the house. Watch Jesse. Watch this. He asked Jesse to bring his sons. Jesse brings forth seven of his sons to be anointed king. And the Bible says the oil does not flow. This is not the one. This is not the one. This is not the one. Through all seven sons, they were rejected because they wasn't the one God was looking for. But Samuel knew God sent me to Jesse's house to find a king. There must be a king in the house. So he asked Jesse, do you have any more sons? Do you have any more children? 
the one Jesse didn't even consider. The one Jesse didn't even think was uh, important enough to bring before Samuel. He said, yeah, I got, a, I got the youngest one. He out there attending or keeping the sheep. Samuel says, go and fetch him. Go and get him. We ain't going nowhere until he get here. The other boys was like, okay, well, I need to go back. No, 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 no. Y'all sit here and wait. And nobody move until he gets here. Pastor, where you going? God will anoint you in front of your enemies. God will allow your enemies to become your, your footstool. Because Jesse didn't think he was something, I can guarantee you, his other brothers. Huh? Sometimes folk who you think know you the best, know you the least. Sometimes folk you think supposed to be supporting you and have your back, don't know nothing about you. Okay, okay let me twist this on you. And then sometimes, because we do know you, we don't know you for who you really are. Pastor, what are you saying? You done got too familiar with some folk. That, that's why I can't let people get too close to me because I can't be your friend. I got to be your pastor. We can't be buddies and we can't be boys. I got to always be your pastor. And it's not good for sheep and shepherds to hang out together too closely. Because you may get to a point where we so cool that you begin to disrespect the office that I hold. I want to know you, but I don't want to be too familiar with you. I, I give you a quick example because I was trying to mentor one of my young fellows, and we went to a game together. And because we had begin to talk and just kind of laugh and joke, we had a football game, and he talking about, ooh, look at that girl right there, ooh, ooh, trying to get. You can't hang out with your pastor and be trying to get a phone number. You can't hang out with your pastor and be looking at girl. You that, that's too familiar. That's too common. Because even when your pastor see him, he said, oh, Lord. Okay, okay. See, y'all don't want to be real. God made beautiful people, and he didn't make me blind. The Bible says, okay, okay, I'm going to go. Since y'all looking at me strange like y'all so holy, let me go ahead and just cut you real quickly. Your eyes see everything. You might not think you see it, but it's not for you to turn around and admire it, but it's not that you don't see it. The Bible says if your eye offend you, pluck it out. Watch this, watch this. It didn't mean literally pluck it out. Okay, y'all don't want this this morning. I'm trying to help you because sometimes we think too literally about what the Bible says. Because if that be the case, none of us will see I mean, dismiss those thoughts. Turn your head, close your eyes, but not literally pluck your eye out. Just want, because I, I, I felt somebody going like, oh, Pastor, you know, I don't see nothing like that. You, 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 the truth ain't in you. The truth ain't in you. And you just don't want to, okay, okay, let me, let, let me move on. The point I want to make here is, watch this, when, when Samuel anoints David, he does something that we wouldn't want to do. He anointed me, and he left me. What am I supposed to do with this king's anointing? And the one who anointed me has just, the Bible says, Samuel went on to Ramah. Left David there, anointed to be king, and he went back to feed sheep, to tend the sheep. You got a king's anointing, and you taking care of sheep. Watch this, watch this. In our, and we'll get into this deeper maybe in Bible study. When your abilities and your responsibilities don't match, God needs time to groom you. David had the ability to be king, but God hadn't given him the responsibility to be the king. It was many years later before David actually became king. So God may anoint you for a job and set you aside for another season. So, so, so somebody missed this. But watch this, watch this. David's anointing don't come in chapter 16. David's anointing comes in chapter 17, even though he's anointed in 16. When David meets Goliath, 
That's when you see the anointing in his life. Anybody walking with me? When David comes, to Goliath is a giant. Nine feet tall. A man of war. Knows about war. David is a little boy. A shepherd boy. Knows about keeping sheep. But he comes to Goliath, even after he had talked to Saul, and Saul tried to convince him, you need my shield, you need my shield. David said, no, I ain't used to working with that. I got a slingshot and a few rocks. Let me use what I'm used to working with. You better learn how to use what, don't, don't try to sing like somebody else. Use what God gave you. Don't try to preach like somebody else. Use what God gave you. Don't try to work like somebody else. Use what God gave you give you this Bible, you ain't going to preach like me. Give you this mic, you ain't going to sing like them singers. Oh my God! But do what God gave you to do with the anointing and power that God gave you. But let me show you the anointing at work. David goes out to this uncircumcised Philistine. How in the world are you going to come up against my God? David takes the sling that God had anointed. Okay, y'all. See, don't, don't make me get deep with it. You just didn't see it. David takes a sling and he swings it at Goliath and the rock hits him right square in the forehead. That's precision. That's anointing. God will give you precision to do what you need to do. If most of us threw that rock, we'd have missed Goliath by a thousand miles. But David had precision. The wind of the Lord, the wind of the Holy Ghost was behind the rock. If you threw a rock, you ain't going to do no more bounce off somebody's head. But David threw it hard enough with the wind of the Holy Ghost that it sunk into Goliath's forehead. And he fell. Watch this, watch this. And he fell. Whoops. And he fell. That don't mean he was dead. A lot of times you knock your enemy down, but because you don't kill him in another season, your enemy raises up again. David goes after he knocks Goliath down and he takes the sword. Watch, watch, watch the power of God. Watch the power of God. That sword was ordained for Goliath. That sword was much bigger than David. Goliath is nine feet. The sword was ordained. It was custom for a grown big man. A man of war. David, just a little boy. But God gives him power to pick up a sword that's bigger than him. And to cut off the enemy's head. You better not just knock your enemy down. You better kill him. You better not just knock him down. You better cut his head off. Because in another season when you might be weak, the same enemy you knock down, he going to get stronger again. Don't take that from drugs and put them in a drawer. But pastor, I ain't smoking no more. But it's close enough for you to get it. Don't take that phone book and hide it. Don't take that black book and tuck it in a drawer somewhere. You better kill it. Go, go and put it in the furnace and burn it up. Well, pastor, I deleted them numbers. Some of us know how to call back or delete. Stuff on, stuff on your computer and on your hard drive, you can call it back. You delete it and you know how to undelete. So, okay, what they, they act like they don't know the truth. They, they act like, Pastor, what are you talking about? Baby, you ain't as dumb as you look. Don't be mad at me because God knows you and God want to make sure you're doing what he called you to do. Well, let me just go ahead and hit you like, watch, watch what God does. He said he anoints David in the presence of his brethren. Most of us, we want to see our brothers fall. Most of us, we want to see our brothers have a bad time. Most of us, we want to see our brothers uh, at some type of demise. But that's not how God do it. Even David was saying, why does the enemy always prosper? God, why don't you cut them off? Watch how God works. God said, um, their punishment is to be right there and watch you go up. I'm going to keep them close enough to you so I can mess with them and they can see you when you go up. 
When you get promoted, they're going to still be right there. They didn't want to see it. They didn't want to hear it. But guess what? Now that I'm going up, you get a chance to watch me. And not just me, but watch God. When you walk into a room, you may not have the most degrees, but you got the most authority. Mm. Your anointing can do things that other folk can't do. Hallelujah. Need that anointing on your job. I don't know why I keep going to that job. Somebody, some, somebody's struggling on a job, and you need this anointing to keep you there. Don't get mad with your supervisor. Just go in there being anointed to do the work. Work as unto God, not as unto man. Woo! Hallelujah. But, but David had power. The anointing gave him power. David was precise. Be able to make accurate decisions. Well, Pastor, I've been thinking about this. Pastor, I've been thinking about that. No, 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 no. Pray about it. Don't just think about it. Pray about it. And so when you make a decision, it will be accurate. It will be precise. It will be what God wants you because you are anointed to do what God called you to do. Hallelujah. Let me, let me flip a couple pages. Y'all just, ah, oh, Jesus. I told my wife I, I write too much because God, is, God just give me so much stuff that I don't know what to do. But I want to talk about power. I want to talk about precision. And then I want to talk about something that's called protection. Watch this, watch this. The anointing protected David. When David went to cut off Goliath's head, Goliath had many, many warriors who was there. And then when they attacked, David came out without a stretch. David came out without a mark. Because the anointing was his protection. Watch this. Watch. The Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my man serve no harm. Understand that scriptural. God will put you in the circumstances and you won't even get touched. That's why they sing the song, I don't look like what I've been through. Because the anointing, the anointing has covered me. That's why the Hebrew boys to go in the fiery furnace and come out not smelling like smoke. Go through something, you come out looking like you've been towed up. That's because you didn't go through with the anointing. When you go through with the anointing, you can go through it and come out looking just as shiny as gold because God will perfect you with the thing that he sends you through. Ah, that's why you need the oil of the anointing in your life because you are anointed for this. Folk looking at you and wonder why you get along with everybody. It's an anointing on your life. Folks looking at you and say, you can, oh, she can just talk to anybody. They just get me. <laughs> not you, baby. That's not a natural ability. That's the anointing. Well, Pastor, I just feel like I want to help these folks. I want to help these folks. I want to help these folks. It's not you want to help them. That's an anointing. It's an anointing of helps that are on your life to help somebody else. You ain't just good. That's God. Hallelujah. Watch what, I'm, I'm closing. Jesus in the Luke 4th chapter around about the verse 18. He understood who he was. But he wasn't arrogant, he was humble. Understanding the power and all the works that he could do. Even Jesus says this. The Lord has anointed me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach this gospel. He has anointed me to go to the poor. He has anointed me to open the eyes of the blind. I didn't just do it. God has anointed me to do this work. I know I'm Jesus. I am self-aware of who I am. But I know who gave it to me. That's the difference in being humble and being arrogant. Arrogant is not that you don't know. Arrogant is forgetting who gave it to you. So Jesus is humble enough to say, it ain't me. It's the power of God that's working in me. He has anointed me to do this. And so while folks are running from the poor, Jesus is running to the poor because he has an anointing for the poor. While folks are running from prisoners, Jesus is running to prisoners because he has anointing to set them free. So while folks are running from nosy folks, some folk has an anointing to deal with nosy folk. While folks are running from greedy folk, begging folk, some folks are running to them because they have an anointing to deal with them. 
why some folk are running on jobs as, man, I wouldn't work with them folk, I wouldn't do this with them, but some folks are running to it because they have anointing for it. My question is, what do you have an anointing for? Will you allow God to use you in the position or in the place that you are anointed to do? A lot of times we're not affected because we're not in the position or the place that we are anointed for. Well, Pastor, I want to be an usher, but you ain't got no anointing. You got a prune face and you're mad with everybody and you don't have a nice demeanor about yourself and you just looking at folk all ugly and mean. They want to walk back out of there because you're not anointed for it. Every day you want to quit. But Pastor, they was ugly. Well, Pastor, they didn't speak. Well, Pastor, they didn't. Then that's not your job. That's not your position. You might just need to be a pew sitter. Glory to God. You got to be anointed to stand at the door. Because ugly folk will come at the door. Mean folk will come through the door. Nasty folk will come through the door. Because the Bible said, let them come. Just like they are, we got to invite them. And because I am anointed for it, I don't care who they are. Come on in, let me love on you. Come on in where it's hot, where the table is spread. Come on in. Because I'm a pastor, why you put up with them for? Because I'm anointed for it. Pastor, why you? I'd be tired of them. That's because you don't have the kind of anointing. Woo! Why you think that young man get up here and sing so hard? It ain't because you clapping and praising. It's because he has an anointing for it. You don't think it's tiring to get up here and, and shout for 15 minutes, run for 15 minutes, sing for 15 minutes, and don't miss a note and love the Lord? It's an anointing. I get up here five minutes and I'm soaking wet and sweat. Want to sit down. That's why I don't sing. I do what I do. I preach and I teach. I'm anointed the pastor. That's why I put up with you. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Pastor, you're supposed to be able to preach. That ain't what God called me to do. It's just a part of what I do. Well, Pastor, you're supposed to be able to. That's not what God called me to do. God called me to pastor. I'm anointed to pastor. And pastor means I take care of you. There are people who have anointings to preach. Some of them don't even open this book. And they just are tear the house up. I'm anointed the pastor. Whether you're a good sheep or a wayward sheep. Whether you're a healthy eating sheep or a malnourished, regurgitating sheep. I still pastor the heck out of you. Because that's what God called me to do. I'm anointed to do what God called me to do. Well, Pastor, why you keep going after them? Why you keep calling them? Because when I was lost. Because when I was down and out. Because when I didn't have nowhere to turn. Somebody kept calling after me. Somebody, somebody kept running after me. Well, Pastor, it's been years and they ain't can. But maybe tomorrow. It is not tomorrow, maybe the next day. It is not the next day, maybe next month. I thank God that they didn't give up on me. Because it didn't take me two days. It didn't take me two months. It didn't take me two years. It took me a long time to get to what God wanted me to be. And even when I got there, I wasn't anointed for it. Mm. But thank God that when we start spending time on our knees, and spending time in his word, he'll take those gifts and those talents, and then he'll anoint them for his work. And things that you couldn't do with your natural ability, he'll cause you to be able to do it. Some folks are problem solvers, and some folks are, are strategists, know how to strategize. It ain't because you're good. It's because God has anointed you. And, and then some people are anointed and don't even know it. Just working and doing stuff. You know, Pastor, I don't know why. I just, you know, I just, I just. Do. Baby, that's an anointing. When folk don't have to call you, you just show up. When folks don't have to ask you, you just know what to do. 
It's not a good idea. It's a God idea. God has anointed you for things that you're not even aware of. You just think you're just doing it. But I thank God that he has anointed me for this work. And I thank God that he has anointed you to do the thing that God has. Will you give God some praise all over this building? Because God has called you. He has crafted you. He has went ahead and created you to make a difference in this community. So, God, we bless you. Ah. Let me, let me just say this before I close. Your anointing has an audience. God didn't gift you for nothing. God didn't anoint you for nothing. Just like David, sometimes when he anoint you, you just got to go back and continue to work until your hour is come. Even with Jesus, when his mother asked him to make wine for the ceremony, he said, Mother, my, my hour is not come. You got to know when is your time and know when is your time to, to sit back and continue to allow God to work on you, to groom you, to perfect you into that which God will have you to be. Will you give God one more great big hand clap of praise on this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. A couple of things real quickly. Let me just ask, if you're saved and you know that you're saved, if you're saved and you know that you're saved, will you just raise your hand all over the building? Will you just give God a wave off him? If you say, I, I mean, you know it, without a shadow of a doubt, if, if for some reason, amen, COVID or an accident or an incident take you out, you know that heaven shall be your home. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, praise God, praise God. If you out in virtual world, amen, will you just give us a thumbs up, amen, if you love the Lord and you know that God is your life and God is your health and God is your strength and you know without a shadow of a doubt, will you give me a thumbs up? Will you? I praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And for those of you who may not know, the Bible says all we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. And the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Praise you, the Lord. Want to encourage you on this morning. Want to encourage you on this morning to continue to share God's word with somebody that you meet. To continue to allow it to be a briefcase. Take God's word with you wherever you go. And share it with somebody, whether it's in your home, whether it's on your job, or even in the mall. That you are anointed for this. Glory to God. When we get ready to dismiss on this morning, amen, we just want to ask um, if you will continue to support this ministry with your tithe and your offering. Continue to give unto the Lord because God has blessed us to be a blessing. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that you meet. The Bible says, with all it shall be measured unto you again. So we want to ask if you would fill out your tithes and envelopes, amen. And for those of you who may be in virtual world, amen. If you will go ahead and just look on our website, amen. Or go to our app. And if you will just hit the give button, amen. And it will give you the information, amen, that you can sow into ministry. If you are not a part of this ministry, we ask that you continue to sow seeds. Because when you're sowing seeds into good ground, we know that those seeds will come up for you again. Amen. So we want to thank God in advance for what you have done. We want to thank God for the things that you are doing. And we want to thank God for the things that you shall do as God continues to move this kingdom. Because God wants me to be in our house. Amen. And we would love to say that we can do these things without finances. But unfortunately... If we stayed in this building and we didn't pay the light bill, amen, they'll they, they cut them off. If we stayed in this building and we didn't we didn't pay the mortgage, they'll tape it off, close the door, change the locks. But so it takes finances to move the world, amen. And I thank God that even during this pandemic, you have been great. And we just ask that you just continue to do what you do, amen, that we can continue to make sure ministry goes forward. Immediately following services on the day, we're going to have our youth advisors a meeting, amen. We're going to just ask if you would just meet right here at, on your right, amen, or my right or your left, amen, for those youth advisors, amen. We're going to meet with Sister Orlando and First Lady Whitaker, amen, uh, to give you some information about um, restarting our youth department. And then immediately following services over in the fellowship hall, we're going to be giving our COVID-19 vaccines. They're going to have the Moderna uh, vaccine available as well as the Pfizer vaccine available. Um, I pray some of you have already registered online, but for those of you who have not, you can continue. You can register when you get over there. The process will be just a little longer. Amen. But I pray, amen, that you will be um, mindful and persevere in making sure that that process 
happen because it is important. It is important to be vaccinated. Uh, with this new D variant going around, the COVID numbers are rising off the charts. Amen. Almost worse than it was when it got started. So we want to ask. We want to ask. We can't make anybody. Amen. But we want to encourage you. Please, ma'am, please, sir, amen, get your children, amen, and make sure that they get vaccinated because we want to make sure that we can get this herd immunity uh, taken care of, that we can get back to some sense of normalcy. So that's going to be over in the fellowship hall, amen, immediately following services, and we want to encourage you, we want to encourage you, amen, to go over and take the vaccine. Praise the Lord. And then on September the 18th, on September the 18th, in our Health and Wellness Center, we're going to have our marriage workshop, amen, our marriage workshop. Sister Stacey Harvey and her husband, amen, Frank Harvey, has done a great job in putting together, amen, a wonderful uh, day for us. So we want to encourage you to come out and be a part, amen. I guarantee you, if you've been married for over 30 years, there's something you can add. I guarantee you, if you've been married for more than 30 days, there's something you can add. So let's come out and enjoy the Lord, amen, on a day of festivities, amen, with our marriage workshop. And we want to thank them in advance for what they, for what they are doing and what they have done, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to, uh, Is anybody in the building getting a shot today? Anybody in the building getting a vaccine today? Is anybody in the building getting a vaccine today? Anybody in the building? Will you give God some praise, man? Will you give God some praise for them? Will you give God some praise for them? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let me just encourage you now. Let me just encourage you now. Amen. That's a wonderful decision. That's a wonderful decision. Amen. And if for anyone else in here who are, who's not vaccinated, amen, who's unvaccinated, I want to encourage you. And just want to pray that God will give you the heart and the mind to do what you need to do. If not just keeping yourself safe, keeping others safe as well. Amen. So let us pray as we prepare to be dismissed on this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we bless you. Because you are our God and you are a great God. We ask now, God, for each one who's resident, for those who will take the vaccination on today, God. That you would touch and that you would cover it. No ill feelings, no um, adverse uh, reactions. Bless them, God, that they might be safe and they may keep others safe. So, God, we thank you for an opportunity, Lord God, to be able to be uh, vaccinated. And then, God, we ask that you'll continue to bless those uh, who are not vaccinated. Keep them covered. Keep them protected. Keep them in an environment, Lord God, that they may be safe as well as ourselves. So now, Lord, we just ask in all things that you'll continue to bless us in a special way. As we prepare to depart from this place, but never, ever from your presence. Hold us in the heart of your hands and continue to love on us as we continue to love on one another. But now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell them God bless you, and we will see you next door. Praise the Lord.